Hey, Gordon, thank you so much for taking the time to do this, uh, especially talk about Kobe Bryant, a subject that is so near and dear to your heart. Uh, let's start at the beginning. Um, growing up, what did Kobe Bryant mean to you? Um, you know, growing up, he was, you know, obviously one of the best players in the league. Um, I was a Pacers fan growing up, so I was a big Reggie Miller guy. We didn't get a chance to see as many um, Lakers games, but certainly the Pacers played the Lakers in the finals. Um, so I was, you know, rooting against Kobe, um, rooting for my Pacers, but just somebody who, um, you know, as you get older and he continued his career in the NBA, just, or were, um, I was amazed by his skill, his, his um, passion for the game, his ability to score in countless different ways, always improve his game. Um, and then, you know, when I got to the NBA, he was kind of the, one of the first, like, um, I can't believe I'm in the NBA moments where we were playing Kobe and the Lakers in the preseason when I was a rookie and I was out on the court early and he was doing his workout and he walked past me and one of our other rookies and said, hey, what's up, Brooks? And we both like giggled like little girls um, <laughs> that said what's up to us. So, um, you know, always just a huge fan of his. How did your guys' relationship develop? Because even back in 2011, he talked about how fond he was of you. How were you able to make such a big impression on him right away? Um, Man, I don't know. I, I think I just uh, played hard on the court and competed. I think he admired that initially. I mean, um, you know, our relationship really, I think, started after um, he was done, it was his last year, and uh, I was actually in Newport for a wedding and just thought to myself, I think it was it was somebody had said that he lived around there and thought to myself like, man, I wonder if he would ever work, work out with me and work with me and took a chance and just hit him up. And um, I actually didn't think he would he would do it. I know he's super busy, but he, he did. He, he worked out with me and it kind of, our relationship kind of blossomed from there. And so just super thankful that he took out his time to do that. And then from then on, you know, our relationships was text, emails, that types of thing. Talked to him on the phone before the playoffs against the Clippers. And, um, you know, just unbelievably thankful that he gave his time to me like that. Going back to that workout back in 2016, um, how much courage did it take for you to kind of reach out and ask him that? And then what was that week like? What were some of the biggest things that you gained from that experience? Yeah, I mean, it was something where I just, like I said, I kind of took a chance. I just, you know, thought it would be great to be able to work out with them and and just to just try to soak up all the knowledge that he had. Um, you know, and then I think more than anything, I just learned more of his mentality. I mean, the work was good and he taught me a lot of things in the work, but more than anything, he was it was his mentality, his mentality towards practice, towards getting better, towards the games, how to attack different situations, just his mindset on everything. And, um, you know, just all of those things, along with, like I said, being able to reach out to him, um, you know, when, when I was struggling during the season or like I said, before the playoffs, just getting his thoughts, all of that was, was, was great. How many hours a day were those workouts? Um, you know, I was there, the first one, um, you know, he, <laughs> he definitely tested me. I was there uh, about an hour early to make sure I was, I was there and he actually didn't show up to the gym. And I texted him about 35, 40 minutes after we were supposed to meet and was like, hey man, I'm just checking to see if I'm at the right spot. And he was like, what? you know, he's like, where are you at? And I told him I was at this school and he's like, oh yeah, I'll be there in like five minutes. Um, so I think he was just checking to see if I was actually gonna show up what I was doing. Um, and, you know, from then on, we worked for a couple hours and the next day I worked for about three hours, next day for about three hours and, um, you know, watched them film together and uh talked after the workout i mean it was it was great but that first that, that first day for sure was just testing the waters with me seeing seeing what i was going to be like you said you got some insight into his mentality what was his mentality like behind the scenes up close and personal in such an intimate setting yeah i mean i think just kind of how he attacked every drill um his mindset going into games of how he was going to punish defenders for you know, doing this or that. Um, you know, he wanted to make sure that he was putting constant pressure on the defense. 
and uh, wasn't going to let anybody off the hook. And I think that was something that definitely stuck with me. It's definitely harder. It's, it's easier said than done. There's no, there's no doubt about that. I think um, that's what made him really great was his ability to, no matter what happened, the play before or the game before or the series before or whatever, I mean, he was going to attack that next possession. And you see that in a lot of the great players. Now you guarded Kobe in his final game uh, in which he scored 60 points. What was it like to witness that? Man, I mean, our whole, our whole team took turns guarding on that game. Um, <laughs> yeah. That was definitely a game that was unlike any other game I'll ever play again. I mean, just with the atmosphere, uh, you know, every time he touched the ball, you knew he was trying to get a shot off. The, the crowd was chanting for him to get a, a shot off. They were upset, you know, for us guarding him as hard as we did. But um, man, what an atmosphere. The celebrities that were there, actually right before the game, we found out that, you know, we weren't going to be making the playoffs. So it was a game that didn't necessarily matter, but it felt like it was, those last three minutes certainly felt like a playoff type atmosphere. And, you know, he got on a roll there at the end. Did you and Kobe exchange any words during that game? Um, we, I actually have a really good, cool picture of me and him at the captain's meeting um, and certainly exchanged some words during that. And, um, you know, I have that framed. And so that's definitely a special moment for me to be able to say that I was, you know, standing across Kobe toe to toe on his last game like that. Now you were quick to debunk a rumor that you purposely committed a lane violation just in case Kobe missed his final free throw. How come it was so important to you to kind of set the record straight on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's just, I think the truth is always the best policy. Um, I also don't, you know, Kobe wouldn't have wanted for me to give him an extra attempt to get to get that point anyways. He, that's just not the type of player that he was. Um, he, from, what, from my recollection, he kind of paused like an extra half second there. And that's why I like accidentally stepped in the middle of the lane. But certainly um, there was a lot of, uh, people that that thought that I did that on purpose, but um, you know he didn't need my help at all. Fast forward to 2017, when you suffered that ankle and leg injury, what was going through your mind um, in the minutes, hours after that happened? Yeah, I mean, just uh, definitely a lot of dark thoughts. You know, just couldn't believe that that had happened, uh, especially after, you know, moving the whole family across the country and trying to start a new chapter, a new journey. Um, just certainly disappointed, frustrated, angry. Um, there was a lot of emotions. There's there's no doubt about that. And just kind of in shock too. I can remember sitting in the, in the locker room and we waited to, for the game to be over um, instead of going to the hospital right away because I was going to fly back with the team and felt like forever sitting there uh, waiting for the game to end. And um, yeah, definitely, definitely not fun, fun memories or fun times. So considering the mental space that you were in at that time, and I'm sure the fear and disappointment that you were feeling, what did it mean to you that Kobe reached out to you and wrote that heartfelt message on Instagram encouraging you to keep going? Yeah, it, it meant the world to me. I think having Kobe do that uh, was was really special, um, you know, and he, he texted me as well. And it was just, uh, you know, it, it meant a lot to, to have somebody like him uh, encourage me for the whole world to see, um, you know, not just privately, like I said, he did, but also publicly. And, um, you know, definitely read that multiple times in my recovery and in my journey back. And, um, you know, I just, I feel like in those moments you can get really isolated. So to have people reaching out like that, it, it was really, it meant a lot. Did that message inspire you throughout your rehab? Absolutely. Um, I think it still inspires me today. I think it's a great message for players that get injured, for players that also just, you know, suffer setbacks that maybe don't have things go their way the first time or things you know, you get cut from a team or whatever it is. Like, I think it's a great message for, for, for players and certainly something that, you know, I still look at from time to time uh, today. You talked about how there were some private texts and private emails. What were those like? Um, I mean, those are 
conversations, you know, between me and Kobe, but, um, you know, I think just to have somebody like that in your corner, um, is, is a really good thing. And somebody that you can reach out to, you know, an all time great who's been through just about every situation that you could think of. Um, I think it's, it's, it was, um, that's what kind of made for, for me, our relationship, you know, kind of special because I was able to reach out to him. He made himself available to me. He said, anytime you need anything, don't hesitate to call or text or anything like that. And so, um, you know, that, that's, that's really cool that he did that. It's interesting because there's almost two sides of Kobe. There's the ruthless uh, Black Mamba, and then there's this guy who's really taken an interest in developing younger players and and sharing his knowledge. How would you describe the Kobe that you knew? Yeah, I mean, I think you would describe him kind of like what you just said. I mean, I played against him multiple times being in the West in Utah, and so we had lots of battles and, um, you know, on the court, it's completely different. And, you know, that very first time that I worked out with them from then on, we had a different type of relationship where, you know, almost like a, like an older brother type relationship where you can, you can text them or call them and, you know, he'll, like, like I said, before the playoffs, we watched film and he walked me through what he thought about the Clippers and thought about, you know, how I could attack, where I should attack, that, that type of, that type of stuff. And, you know, that was um, something that, you know, is between me and Kobe, but certainly something that, you know, the public doesn't necessarily see. How, how did uh, watching film together end up happening? And, and what was that experience like for you? Yeah, I mean, it's just something where you reach out and say, hey, what do you think about our series against the Clippers? I, I kind of need some advice. And he's like, do you, let's break down some film together. And I said, okay. And so we set up the, the call and we just went through it. And, um, you know, it was really helpful. Certainly helpful to have, like I said, an all-time great be able to look at stuff and say, you need to do this. This is where you can attack. You got to tell your teammates, let's get it here. And it, just to see his mind work was, was really cool. We're obviously approaching the one year anniversary of Kobe's death. Does it, does it feel like a year has passed? I know time can be kind of strange, especially with something so personal and emotional like this. Does it feel like he's been gone for a year? Um, man, I think this, this year has been, um, it's been a hard year, I think on so many different levels. It does not, it doesn't feel like it's with everything that's gone on. It does not feel like it's been a year to me. I mean, it seems like, um, to me, it seems like just yesterday when, when I was reaching out, uh, when he was reaching out to me when, when I moved to Boston before, right before I moved to Boston. So, um, it doesn't it does not seem like it's been a year already what are are there any parts of kobe's game that you tried to incorporate into your own yeah certainly his footwork um especially in the mid-range um i think being able to um kind of simplify my game but make it so it's hard harder for the defense to guard which is which is kind of like you, you kind of see that that is almost like a contradiction, but that's kind of how he operated. He said, you got to make your game simple, but make it so they can't stop it. And that's kind of what a lot of the stuff that we worked on. And, um, you know, I think that's something I've tried to implement into my game. And lastly, why do you think Kobe has been so incredibly important to so many people across the league and really across the world? Yeah, I mean, I think just the way he played the game, um, his competitiveness, um, I think just set a standard uh, for, for how to be passionate about basketball, how to um, be a leader in the game, the work ethic that he had. Um, I mean, it, it was inspiring. And I think it's inspiring, not just for basketball players, but for, like you said, millions of people across the world doing whatever they that they're doing. I mean, he inspires you to want to be the best and want to want to work on whatever it is you're working on each day and um, I think that's something that a lot of people can look towards thank you so much Gordon I really appreciate your time all right thank you